Hey, what's going on, DDO players? Axel here. So today we got kind of out of nowhere a new producer's letter. So there's a lot to talk about. There's new stuff that was announced. So let's just get started. So this one again was written by Tolero, who is the producer for DDO. She took over doing the producer's letter stuff as of the February producer's letter. Uh, I assume that she'll just continue doing these as it goes forward. So she's a new producer. So she's under Severlin uh, at SSG. So this is what she has to say. Greetings. For those of you who don't know me yet, my name is Amanda Tolero Grow, and I level, leveled up to the rank of producer this year. After previously working for SSG and community commerce and other behind the scenes roles, you can read more about me in the my introductory letter from February. So there's a link there to that. She continues, I've had a lot of fun watching everyone play the Isle of Dread expansion content so far. By the way, if you haven't seen it yet, I did a really detailed, long review for Isle of Dread. I'll link it below in the description if you haven't seen that yet, but I posted it several weeks ago. Then she continues, after all this dinosaur hunting, now we're going to turn the tables with an updated rule set for our new season of Hardcore Permadeath League, A Dangerous Game. The hunters are now hunted. Mwahaha. The Hardcore League tests your ability to quest in DDO without dying. You can read more about the Hardcore League here on DDO.com. The sixth season, run season runs until the morning of October 24th. We expect to continue our periodic seasons of hardcore in the future, and we look forward to reading your thoughts about the season on the forums. So this is not new. Um, hardcore, the new season, season six, has been going on for a week or two now. I personally am not participating, but I know a lot of people are. The whole, the big thing to know about this season, the big twist is there are these um, basically hounds that will spawn in quests. They're really dangerous. They can kill you. It's themed after the Hunter Be Hunted pack from Feywild in kind of the master of the hunt is is, is the theme here the, the whole the whole hunt aspect of it anyways let's continue on so hardcore it's going on now till october 24th if you want to participate but no new news there we knew about that hardcore is a the thing they're going to continue to do periodically all right so here we go uh now now we're getting to some new stuff so some big announcements in my last producer's letter i mentioned new character build options that would be coming later this year and today i'm here to share more with you about our plans archetypes are a new way or adding soon to play a class type. So for example, you can play a cleric, but now is the cleric archetype called dark apostate, which takes a darker look at the traditional cleric role. These archetypes can be almost anything. They can have different enhancement trees, spells, feats, special abilities, and past lives, and are meant to explore tons of unused design space for our existing classes. We've done some of this in the past through universal enhancement trees, but archetypes give us much more room to create into, and we expect to see the debut of many more archetypes in the future. Our first set of these archetypes that debut in update 56 are in are as follows dark apostate cleric this undead shrouded character focus on focuses on negative energy and darker magic storm singer bard this archetype focuses on the magic of music along with sonic and electric focused spellcasting. Sacred Fist Paladin. Play a hand wraps using Paladin that combines key with holy energies. I can encourage you to try out these new archetypes on our Lamana pre Lamania preview server, which I believe is actually up right now. All right. So big announcement. So archetypes. These to me sound basically like class variants you know how we've had racial variants like wood elf these sound to me a lot like say a class variant so a way for them to introduce a new class without doing an entirely new class so there's going to be new enhancement trees they mentioned the big thing for a lot of players which is going to be new past lives so um, i'm sure we'll see we'll definitely obviously see more details as it, this gets closer and uh they did say it's going to debut in update 56 so it's not too far away but uh, yeah, so different enhancement trees, different past lives, new special abilities. So yeah, so basically class variants. So a different way to play classes we played before. So that'll be interesting. I'm sure it'll give players more to do. I don't know yet if you're going to have to redo all of these different types of variants in order to keep your completionist, heroic completionist past life. I know a lot of people are probably wondering about that. They didn't mention here. I would say probably not because these are going to be different past lives, but uh they will still be within the same class. So if you have the heroic completionist, I mean, you still would have had one past life for each class, which as far as I know is the requirement right now, but we'll see. Maybe they, they could be required, they could not. But uh, the three that you have lined up so far, uh, some of these are cool. Probably, obviously, you guys know I like my clerics. So undead um, cleric is something that I've seen before. I played with some players actually right now who are running that. So that'll be interesting to see how they pull that off. Stormbringer, I don't know. I mean, we have Spellsinger already, but hey, um, something 
different for a bard caster. Sacred Fist Paladin, that, that's one is interesting. Play hand wrap using Paladin. I saw several posts on the forums today, people saying like, hey, you need to fix a monk uh, hand wrap using monks before you get to Paladin. And well, we'll see. We'll see what, um, hopefully they do that too at some point. All right, so let's continue on. So this is another big piece of news concerning the Temple of Elemental Evil. I know that can, kind of came out of nowhere, right? Um, temple, uh, uh, it, one of the, I think it was the second classic module they put into the game, a very unpopular pack, not run very much for a variety of reasons. Mainly the, the biggest reason being uh, it's very, very long and the design of the quest is one that tends not to be very popular among the player base, the mob density. For me, uh, I'll just tell you Temple of Elemental Evil is my least favorite adventure pack in the entire game. And the main reason is the, the whole mob density just ruins it for me. There's just way too many mobs in there. And I don't think the, having the whole Slayer Zone thing inside the temple really was very appealing. And on top of that, the, the loot, even on release, I, I wasn't really compelled to get any of it. I will say though, some of the cosmetics, like the mushroom hat's pretty cool. But in any case, they're going to revisit the Temple of Elemental Evil. So let's just continue reading. Update 56 also gives us the opportunity to take a fresh look at our classic adventure pack, Temple of Elemental Evil. We'll be making some changes to the heroic version and also adding support for legendary levels. We've heard from you over the years about some of the tougher and more confusing parts of part one and part two. We'll be breaking up these exceptionally long dungeons into a series of smaller quests. Thank you. Uh, now you can make progress in the temple without feeling like you have to go back to the drawing board if you can't get through it all in one sitting. We're also looking at some of the more difficult boss encounters, such as Zugamoy, who's the big boss there, and updating the entrances to the temple, among other things. Expect to see this work soon in Lamania. All right, so thank you. If I was going to pick any uh, adventure pack to to fix, I, I, this is aside from Epifying, because I would like to see other packs Epified, but if there's any pack that needs needs revisiting and changing and fixing it's definitely temple i will tell you guys right now um to get me to run temple right now someone's gonna have to donate me like a hundred dollars i'm gonna need to be drunk it's not gonna be a good time so thank you this is a very good choice for a pack to fix they must fix it uh we don't have too many details like are they going to revisit the crafting are they going to change uh anything else other than just making it shorter in, in terms of the, the different parts but that's something that's I, I think they should have done since the beginning the the whole idea of temple of elemental evil they they, they were probably a little bit too um probably a little bit too loyal to the pen and paper lore there because part one and part two it's just too long i hope they break that up into like four parts maybe then i'll definitely have to give it another look after this work is done all right so let's continue on with temple uh oh yeah by the way it, it's because it's one that's been out i mean obviously this is gonna be free to everyone who already owns temple so but uh let's continue on uh she says temple isn't the only classic ddo thing getting some love i'm excited to tell you about the changes coming to september coming in september to crystal cove this work will make it easier for players to get into crystal cove we've identified some changes to improve performance during the event no more gathering treasure map pieces and waiting around for the mining challenges to open Instead, you can simply open the door to the Cobalt Challenge as long as the event is running and have you have a treasure compass to enter. You'll be able to turn in your old map pieces for doubloons. Speaking of doubloons, you'll be able to find them randomly in chests while the event runs, and you'll have a chance to get, the, get a treasure compass whenever you defeat ghost champions that can appear in dungeons whenever the event is active. We'll have more information on Lamania and elsewhere as we get closer. Okay, so it sounds like they're doing to this what they did to uh, the Night Revels, which is they're giving you more options to collect stuff to participate in the event. So in champion chests for certain champions, you know, you can kill those champions and, and get those. Like this events, other events like the Snow Peaks have these uh, mechanics as well. They don't have like a central, uh, events in the past have kind of had a central area where you farm say like the Dolores Graveyard where you farm for keys to access the quest but this just continues the trend of them making the events um i guess it's more lenient so that you can participate in the event without actually actively running in the event areas so that's um, something i'm not surprised to see and i think it's a nice change it's nice to be able to actually make progress towards maybe some event loot you want to run while you're actually running other stuff because uh, especially with you know for some of the more grindier stuff you may just not it gets quite uh monotonous having to run the event for for this the repetition is just can be quite bad so this is good i like that um especially if you're going for some of the lower hanging fruit you may not have to do much uh farming of stuff in the actual event area at all 
So yeah, um, let's continue on. Looking later into the year, we are working on a new adventure pack for Update 57 that continues the story of Peril of the Planar Eyes. Morgrave University has learned more about the Planar Eyes, and so has the Hidden Hand, the cult in Eberron that now worships Vecna. Race against time to claim the remaining Planar Eyes and learn more about the secrets of the Codex of the Infinite Planes while thwarting the plans of others seeking the same treasure. So if you remember, the storyline of the planar, uh, Peril of the Planar Eyes pack that was, was, that was released, what, like a year ago? year and a half ago? Something like that? Uh, was there's these these eyes that are like uh, draw power I believe from another dimension and in the first pack the pack of the planar eyes we helped uh, I think it was the Morgrave University and Sharn to retrieve four of the 13 of them so in this new pack we're going to go after I assume the remaining nine uh, I don't know if this is like the last pack concerning the the planar eyes or if there's gonna be a follow-up so maybe there's like uh, another four quests where we go after nine of them uh, a little the thing that's a little confusing about this is that in the first pack there were four quests and each pack was each quest in the peril of the planar eyes pack revolved around retrieving one of the 13 eyes so does this mean there's going to be nine quests obviously there's not going to be nine quests in an adventure pack very unlikely um typically these days we see between like two and four quests but hey maybe they'll surprise us or maybe they'll do what is probably the most likely thing is uh we'll, we'll probably get more than one eye in one quest the quest design will probably change a little bit but they did say that we're going to go after the remaining planar eyes claim the remaining planar eyes so i would assume somehow we're going to go after the remaining nine but anyways new adventure pack not surprising they do those um uh, you know once or twice a year at these days so yeah so cool guys a lot of cool stuff to look at big news again the biggest news is going to be the the new archetypes which are again basically class uh ver class variants then the temple of elemental evil work very cool and then uh then we've got uh the new some info about the new adventure pack so yeah guys that's gonna be it for this video let me know what you think about all this stuff below in the comments i'll be interested in reading that as always hope you all enjoyed have a good one take care